Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you. India says want cordial ties with Pakistan but won't compromise on terrorism. Activist condemns crackdown on peaceful rally in Sindh, highlights Pakistan's atrocities. And Prime Minister Hasina says IMF loan to Bangladesh has no conditions attached. And now for all the details, India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arinda Bakchi on Thursday said India wants cordial relations with all its neighbours, including Pakistan, but won't compromise on the fight against terrorism. The comments came over a question on remarks by Pakistan's Prime Minister, who said this week that Islamabad wants talks with India on burning points, including Kashmir. Spokesperson of India's Foreign Ministry Arindam Bakchi on Thursday said India wants cordial relations with all its neighbours including Pakistan but won't compromise on the fight against terrorism. The comments came over a question on remarks by Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif this week in an interview who said he wants serious talks with his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi on issues including Kashmir. However, the Pakistan PM's office later said the talks cannot happen until India reverses its 2019 move to abrogate special status granted to the Kashmir region. clarification terror hostility violence position Meanwhile, Bakchi welcomed the UN Security Council's decision this week to declare Abdul Rahman Makki, the deputy chief of Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba as a global terrorist. Bakchi said we will push that other four Pakistani terrorists proposed last year are also listed soon. Makki has been accused of having involvement in the attack on Delhi's Red Fort in 2000 and 26-11 Mumbai attacks. In 2008, New Delhi has long accused Islamabad aids and support terrorists to spread unrest in India. However, Pakistan denies this allegation. In news from Pakistan, the State Bank of Pakistan on Wednesday said the current account deficit has dropped to 0.4 billion US dollars in December 2022 from 1.9 billion dollars a year earlier. However, the country's forex reserves stand at 4.3 billion dollars, which are barely enough to cover 3 weeks of import. As Pakistan continues to battle economic instability and soaring inflation, the country got a sigh of relief as its current account deficit dropped to 0.4 billion US dollars in December 2022 from 1.9 billion US dollars a year earlier. However, as per State Bank of Pakistan statement, foreign exchange reserves held by them currently stands at 4.3 billion US dollars, just enough for three weeks of imports cover. The bailout package by the global lender IMF has also been stalled for month as the South Asian nation has failed to implement economic reforms demanded by them. Adding to the woes, the World Bank has also delayed the approval of two loans worth 1.1 billion US dollars for Pakistan. Meanwhile, the United States has said they want to see Pakistan in an economically sustainable position. Noting the development with IMF and other international lenders, US State Department said they are supportive where they can be, but ultimately the talks need to be completed by both parties only. Conversations with our, our Pakistani partners often do uh, entail technical issues. Oftentimes these are addressed between the Department of the Treasury and our Pakistani partners. Uh, but Pakistan's uh, macroeconomic stability uh, is a topic of this com uh, conversation between the Department of State and our counterparts, uh, the White House, Treasury Department, uh, among others. The South Asian nation of 220 million is still reeling from devastating floods. 
that have led to losses of more than 30 billion US dollars. Earlier in a report, the World Bank termed Pakistan as the weakest economy of South Asia. The lender stated, Pakistan's economic output was not only declining itself but also bringing down the regional growth rate as well. Moving on, activist Shafi Burfat has condemned the police crackdown on a rally of activists and locals this week in Sindh who were peacefully demonstrating against human rights violations in the region. Burfat urged the UN and the international community to take note of rising atrocities against Sindhis and their demand for freedom from Pakistan's occupation. Shafi Burfat, the chief of JSMM, GSN Mutahida Mahaz, has condemned the firing and police crackdown on a peaceful gathering of Sindhi activists and locals this week who were holding a demonstration rally in Sun Town of Sindh on 119th birth anniversary of nationalist leader GM Sayyid. Burfat raised concern over rising atrocities against Sindhis and Baloch people and appealed the UN and rights organizations to take notice of exploitation of natural resources in the region by Pakistan and China and sufferings of people due to growing extremism. He also voiced concern over China's repeated moves to block any global sanctions against Islamist terrorists in Pakistan. <laughs> इंटरनेशनल जो इदारों की उस फैसलों से हम ये अगर रुकावट डाल रहा है तो ये कल चीन के भी गले में पड़ जाएंगे तो चीन दोहरा खेल खेल रहा है एक तरफ वो खुद अपने युगर मुसलमानों को को किस तरह ब्रूटलिटी से कुचल रहा है दूसरी तरफ पाकिस्तान में जो इस्लामी आतंकवादी जो लीडर है उनके उनको जो है वो प्रोटेक्ट कर रहा है बुरफत आल्सो डिमांडेड द इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी टू डायरेक्टली रीच आउट टू पीपल इन सिंध एंड अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ पाकिस्तान विद फंड्स एंड रिलीफ to help them recover from the devastating floods last September. He said Sindhis do not have any faith that Pakistan government will provide them any relief as part of its exploitative agenda. In news from Afghanistan, the UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed met Afghanistan's acting foreign minister on Wednesday to discuss women's education and work after Taliban authorities ordered most female NGO workers to stop work and barred women from attending universities. Amina also met former Afghan President Hamid Karzai to promote the rights of women and girls. The UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed met Afghanistan's Acting Foreign Minister Malvi Amir Khan Muttaki on Wednesday to discuss women's education and work after the Taliban authorities ordered most female NGO workers to stop work and barred women from attending universities. Muttaki said a lack of formal recognition, travel restrictions on Taliban leaders and banking sanctions were causing problems and that the international community should address them according to a foreign ministry statement. He added that women were able to work in health and education. The deputy UN chief and a delegation also met former Afghan president Hamid Karzai to promote the rights of women and girls in the wake of the recent Taliban crackdown. Amina Mohammed was in Kabul as part of a series of meetings with stops in Turkey, Qatar and Pakistan to discuss Afghan situation. The Taliban has said that the concerns regarding women's rights will be dealt with according to the established rule. No country has so far recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development, leading to a greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. Moving on, for the first time since 2016, Sri Lanka has witnessed an increase in number of children suffering from undernutrition as per a report by the Health Ministry. This comes as the island nation is struggling with soaring prices, including food, largely caused by its worst economic crisis in 70 years. For the first time in at least six years, the number of children grappling with various forms of undernutrition has increased in Sri Lanka, as per a report from the Sri Lankan Health Ministry. The report states 43.4% of children under five years are having some form of nutrition problem, which include growth faltering, underweight, wasting and stunting, with 42.9% of the children reported to be having some form of undernutrition. The numbers indicate an increase in percentage of children facing growth issue, which had dropped steadily since at least 2016. 
while 15.3% of the children in the country were found to be underweight as compared to 12.2% last year, 10.1% was suffering from wasting and 9.2% from stunted growth, the report states. The island nation of 22 million people is struggling with soaring prices, including of food, largely caused by its worst economic crisis since it gained independence in 1948. Sri Lanka requires the backing of China, India and Japan, its biggest bilateral lenders, to reach a final agreement with the IMF on the 2.9 billion US dollars loan that is essential to put its battered economy back on track. In news from Bangladesh, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, told the Parliament on Wednesday that IMF's $4.5 billion loan to the country has no conditions attached. The IMF Executive Board is expected to consider approval of the program for Bangladesh on January 30th. The IMF International Monetary Fund's $4.5 billion US dollars loan to Bangladesh has no conditions attached. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina told Parliament on Wednesday, local media reported after concerns were expressed by lawmakers. The remarks came after Hasina's meeting with IMF Deputy Managing Director Antoinette M. Sai this week. In November, the IMF provisionally agreed on a support program for Bangladesh to help prevent economic instability escalating into a crisis in the South Asian country. The IMF Executive Board is expected to consider approving the program with Bangladesh on January 30, the lender said in a statement. Hasina in her address put emphasis on austerity in usage of electricity and gas. Bangladesh's $416 billion economy has been one of the world's fastest growing for years. But rising energy and food prices, sparked by Russia-Ukraine war, along with shrinking foreign exchange reserves, have swelled its import bill and current account deficit. Last August, Bangladesh hiked fuel prices by around 50% in a move to trim its subsidy burden, but government officials denied at the time that this was prerequisite for the IMF loan. And keeping up with the unique and age-old tradition, hundreds of devotees flocked a temple in India's western Surat and offered live crabs to the Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva, this week. It is believed that if one offers live crabs in the temple, then their ear-related ailments are cured. Have a look. Scores of devotees on Wednesday thronged Ramnath Shivkela Temple in Surat in India's western Gujarat state and offered live crabs to the idol of Lord Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction. According to the belief, if one offers live crabs in the temple, then their ear-related ailments are cured and their children will never experience ear pain in their lifetime. Many devotees also offer the crabs as a means of thanksgiving for the earlier obligations, particularly those related to health problems. आपके कान में या कोई भी दिक्कत है डॉक्टर ने ऑपरेशन वगैरह कुछ भी बोला है तो यहां की बंदत रखते हो ना उससे वो आपको ठीक हो जाता है और इस दिन यहां पे ये केकड़ा चढ़ाते हो ना तो उससे आपकी ये मन्नत पूरी हो कि आपको दवाई की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती मन्नत तो नहीं है बच्चे के लिए चढ़ाते हैं बच्चे को कान में कुछ प्रॉब्लम नहीं होती इसकी वजह से केकड़े चढ़ाने से बच्चे को कान में कुछ प्रॉब्लम नहीं होती तो बरसों से मेरे ससुराल वाले चढ़ाते तो अभी मुझे पता चला तो मैं भी आती हूं Apart from crabs, devotees were also seen offering flowers, bilva leaves, milk and coconut. Devotees continue to keep up this age-old tradition on the auspicious occasion of Ekadashi in the month of Chanfri and they strongly believe that their wishes will be fulfilled by doing so. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.